Hi guys, welcome back to Chaz's No Bullshit Reptile Advice. It's been a great day today. We've had one of our videos shared onto Reptile Report, which is a pretty big deal. It's a big old website and a Facebook page. I think they've got something like about three quarters of a million um, subscribers on Facebook. So some really, really useful coverage for the shop, which we're ever so pleased about. Um, we're about to clear 1,500 subscribers. Never in a million years thought that we would ever get to that point. I never even thought we'd get to 500 to be honest, but you know, to be nearly at 1500 is amazing. You guys that have been there since the beginning, your support has been just second to none, absolutely fantastic. You're wonderful, I love you all, and uh, you know, this is all for you. Um, I'm not going to forget, you know, moving forward. Really, really pleased with the community spirit we've got going, the discussions, the people that jump on board with their comments. And, you know, even people that dissent away from what I'm saying, it's good. There has to be a conversation. So today's a bit of a mod. I, it's, it, I need another question receptacle. We're running out of questions. Plus, I'm disorganized and my head's up my arse at the best of times. So I don't find the original questions. I may have seen them, written them down. It, so I, if, I've, if I've missed your question, just repost it in the comments here. And then I can relook at the going forward doing that sort of stuff. I was back on the uh, Northern Reptile Forum on Facebook uh, and there was a guy who made a post called Francis Koskeri or Koskeri, who is a Gibraltar and he's a, he's a great guy um, and very cerebral, very intelligent man, uh, was one of the founder members of the Advancing Herpetological Husbandry page on Facebook and thinks very left field. Uh, me and him probably segue slightly in certain things that we would do or wouldn't do, but he put an interesting post and it challenged a few conceptions and I came up with an analogy and I thought the analogy was useful plus it addresses something else which people have asked me in the comments many many times how I got them um, so yeah um, these gorgeous hideous appendages on the side of my head two heavily cauliflowered ears and they're a result of doing Brazilian Jiu Jitsu for about eight years um, as well as Muay Thai and uh, shoot fighting or submission wrestling. So the analogy was that when we're discussing the difficulty of maybe the, the husbandry technique that we want to use, uh, whether that be cohabitation, whether that be uh, the UV light, whether that be other stuff, if we haven't got the fundamentals in place first as our foundation for how we move forward as keepers then it's very easy for the wheels to come off and the analogy was when I was both training and coaching BJJ um, we had a belt system white, blue, purple, brown, black and generally it took about a decade to get to your black belt or fax preta so um, I never got there, my joints and my body just gave out with the years of rugby that I played before, before. just absolutely, everything's knackered, shoulders, knees, elbows, the works. Um, but I got to brown belt, so fax and moron, and I, I helped coach, and we, we had a system where, with the belts, and as you gained a belt, you gained a move or set of moves that had been forbidden to the belt before. And it was because your aptitude had increased to allow you to do it. See, white belts didn't just walk in off the street, put on a gear and start cranking out moves. We had to teach them how to fall first so that they didn't hurt themselves. And obviously, the analogy is, like such as blue belts, they got wrist locks. Purple and brown belts could knee bar. Black belts could heel hook, which I actually think now are illegal completely. But the point being that each of these moves could create far worse injuries and uh, wrist lock yeah it's bad you break a wrist it's, it's pretty pretty tasty but you're going to get over it knee bar you snap a knee the wrong way you've got major problems but at least that's a straight sort of break whereas a heel hook literally twists the knee in its socket and snaps every ligament it's a terrible move hence why the black belts are the only ones that could do it and even then i think it acts like it has actually been completely made illegal apart from in certain uh, sort of no rules or different rule fights so um and the reason being is obviously 
we want to make sure that we protect our partner and that we are competent to be able to pull off these moves the same way that we would need to be competent to take on these husbandry techniques instead of having a training partner we've now got a reptile that we're keeping as a pet and we need to know that we have got our fundamentals in place before we try our incrementally more difficult styles of husbandry including bioactive and other things where a shitload of more variables comes into play and it gets more and more difficult now I acknowledge along with everybody who's probably ever done any martial art, not everybody is destined to be a black belt. They're just not. And some people are happy being blue belts or purple belts and it's just the training that they enjoy. Not everybody has to be a black belt, you know? And a blue belt or a purple belt is still competent at self-defense, just not as confident as a black belt. And not everybody wants to be a black belt keeper. And it can be we have to be very careful not to turn this into a you have got to. Now, well, I'm, you know, I'm competent, I'm competent, I'm a blue belt, I'm a purple belt, I can, I can look after myself. No, but you're not doing this, that, but I don't want to do this, that, new, but I'm not interested in being a black belt keeper. I'm quite happy being a blue belt keeper, I'm quite happy being a purple belt keeper. And as long as our animals are growing and, and, and showing, is that okay, is that enough? Sure, there's got to be an aspirational element to it where we all want to improve and develop. We don't want to stagnate, we certainly don't want to go backwards where certain husbandry techniques that have taken hold over the past decade such as the racking systems and that factory style actually they're problematic because they are in husbandry terms a backward step so it's where we go moving forward and trying to foster and develop the right kind of development for keepers as you know on this channel I'm incredibly geared towards the beginners where I'll happily hand over to Francis and others once they're developed and if they decide that they want to follow those routes um, but I it's, it's not something that, that ha it has to be a rite of passage they may decide they don't want to go that far and I, I personally don't see them them being as bad keepers because they don't want to be mega advanced they just they don't want it and they're quite happy with pseudo naturalistic and a couple of caves and a couple of bowls and some artificial plants you know it's it doesn't need to be super complex and I think that 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 for me works it shows that there is a nuance to it not, not only is there a nuance to the different husbandry techniques that we can use but whether we want to actually develop that far you know are you forced to do it do you need to be able to run a super complex bioactive rig with blah 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 and this that misting system cloud system fog system 24 different temperature settings throughout 24 hours but no not everybody has to aspire to get there if you want to get there you want to do it then buzzing go for it and i'm certainly not going to hold you back and say ah, no you mustn't do it but i think you know uh, broad brush strokes can be problematic and there has to be some gray areas there has to be that nuance and I think that we're you know at, at this channel we're tr really trying to develop fundamental care we don't need to worry so much about the advanced actually I've got less interest in discussing retics and anacondas and all the stuff that everyone finds sexy and far more interested in discussing and selling and developing interest in snakes that can be kept by a beginner pituophis the bulls pines and gophers lampropeltis the kings and milks pantherophis the corns and rats <coughs> bogotophis the transpacos rats there's, there's loads 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 and that's what I want to develop the interest in and that's what I want to foster in people that you don't just need to settle for a ball python or a corn snake there's so many different things that you can keep which will be rewarding awesome pets and as much as I know about the more advanced snakes and stuff actually and, and the, the more advanced lizards actually I'm more interested in making sure that the people that are starting out in this hobby have got the, the best foundation possible and I'm here at your beck and call 
that's what this channel is here for particularly the Chaz has no BS reptile advice the whole principle behind this series is you get to ask me what you want to know on occasion I will make videos about stuff I find interesting that I hope that you will find interesting as well but on the whole it is just so that we're sharing information we're all growing together as keepers so anything you want to put in the comments regarding what you would like to see from this series questions you want to ask everything else I've finally put to bed the mystery of my hideous ears that my wife finds absolutely disgusting so yeah um, we'll be back soon with more videos keep the questions coming thank you so much for the support you are all ace love you peace